Okay. Hey, Jim. So just for the folks who might watch this video, you are not only an esteemed art dealer, <laughs> known for your deep knowledge and discretion with regard to NFTs and all kinds of blockchain assets, crypto, but also an expert poker player who recently appeared it's on a live, stream, a live stream from uh, what's it called Poker Night in America? Poker After Dark. Poker After Dark. Yeah. Um, which was shot at the Poker Ghost Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, I believe, right? Yeah. I got smashed both days that <laughs> both days that we played, and it'll be out soon for everyone to watch. They still haven't, they still haven't dropped it, which is annoying. I, I haven't heard anything from Maria, and honestly, the longer it it's away from me the more I just have no interest in seeing it and like I'm hoping I, I wasn't even going to tell people when it came out to be honest everyone's forgotten and I was like thank god I have a great interest in seeing it so yeah I hope you can count on me all right so today we have two hands submitted by Charlie Charlie was until quite recently a member of CSMC 350 which is a college seminar at Yale it's called Game Theory in Action from Poker to Business Negotiations until he left to uh, join the Army, where he's completed the first part of basic training. He's back for the holiday. And he gave me two hands to review. So the first thing to know is that this was an online cash game that I believe is only Yale students who play. And uh, the game is officially a 25 cent, 50 cent game, but unusually, there seems to be a mandatory $1 straddle, a $2 restraddle, and a $4 restraddle. So in a six-handed okay. game, everyone except the button has posted something. It's a weird configuration. <laughs> and also the first to act is the button. So the button is also under the gun, which changes things up at least a okay. bit. On the flip side, though, they're extremely deep. So our hero, Charlie, has $575. And you can see that... Um, I guess there's two players with $3,700. So even at a 2-4 game, which is pretty big for an online game, those players have what? Um, I can't see what you're saying. I don't know if that... Oh, applies. I have to share my screen. I'm so sorry. Right. Well, it would make more sense when I do. Uh, let me share a tab. Look, who's here to discuss the hand history? <laughs> oh, we got Spike in the house. Hi, Spike. How are you? Nice to see you. All right. So, Jam, now you, you probably can see it. No, you don't. Hey, Spike. All right. So, um, let me see if I can get the action going. So, this is, it says raises, but these are actually just the mandatory. The straddles. Here's Charlie. Now, I can tell you uh, what Charlie has, and I guess we can leave the villain's hand unrevealed. Hi. Uh, Charlie has King Jack offsuit. I think it's okay. I don't recall the suits. They might matter. I think he has a jack of hearts. So it, he's the first to act and he's on the button here. Although I'm not sure why you can't see. Do you see a dealer button anywhere? I don't. But he is the button, I believe. So um he goes ahead and raises to twelve dollars and fifty cents, which is basically three times the straddle. Oh, there's your dealer button right there. Any, any thoughts? What do you think of that open size? Do you like it? Are we are we starting now? Or are we going to yeah. see what the action is after that? Well, I thought we just. I mean, I actually think there's a legitimate question. Would you would you open King Jack off on the button here? And if so, how do you? Want to uh, I definitely open it, but I, I probably, I mean, I don't know how the game's playing, but I raise more than that. Yeah, I would too. I think for, for one reason, there's more than $4 in the pot. You've got another three seventy five from all the blinds. Yeah. I, I think it's a little small, but he's in position. So it's just... All right, you get a fold from the small blind. You get a raise to $60.75 from Step Dealer, um, who is in the big blind, the 50-cent blind. With three guys behind him. So I don't know. I don't think we have any reads, and I don't know anything about Step Dealer. He's also raising to almost five times, just under five times the raise. It's a pretty big three bet. Um, 
Now, I, it's these guys all fold, 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 fold in all those extra blinds. So that's just in the pot. And now the action's back to Charlie. What do you want to do with King Jack off? I, I fold here 100% of the time unless I have any reason not to. I mean, you're... But but also, I'm not really a cash player. Never, so, mind, like, never mind, Jim. Um, but I, but yeah, I just, I just wouldn't get... Like, I don't want to put in what's essentially 120 big blinds with King Jack off just because they have position when I have no reason to th like why why are we thinking that they're messing around I mean right just hold the King Jack I I would be inclined to do exactly the same thing and I I guess you could imagine some circumstance where suppose this guy is 30 percent of hands or so it would have to be a really high percentage he would have to be I think it would have to be 30 percent plus of hands he'd have to be three betting Every time, and by the way, Charlie should be pretty strong here because he's first to act before the flop. So there's no reason for Charlie to be really light, and therefore there's no reason for Step Dealer to be just arbitrarily. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I mean, unless you have more information about it, to me but, it's like 100 percent fold. But um, check this out. Instead, he uh, he he basically min re raises because he makes it 131.50. So uh, it's it's barely it's barely twice the raise. Um, yeah, I mean, is he is he raise folding here? Is I, like I don't see how he could. It's too big a percentage of his stack. He started with five hundred and seventy. So, so is he bluffing or is this for value then? What what is the he's bluffing? I assume. I assume he's bluffing. So you could say if he had aces or kings, he might be raised to this amount, and that would be okay uh, because. He's putting a quarter of his stack in the middle. He should really never be folding, I don't think. And so the amount, I guess, is okay. I'm not usually inclined to min-raise people because you're, no, you're I mean, basically giving them more than three to one to take a shot with. Even if you just have a random ace, Kings is not too happy letting Step Dealer just realize equity on the – well, it's going to see three cards with an ace, and what's yeah. the point? It's hard to fold anyway, even if there is an ace. Yeah, I, there are no hands I make it that size with. He could have just jammed, I suppose. If he's really that convinced that Step Dealer is very wide here, I guess I like a jam better. It's a pretty big jam, though, because he'd be putting in, what did we say, it was 575 over sixty dollars. It's also what are we huge. doing? Why are we putting in six hundred dollars in a two in a twenty five cent fifty cent game with okay. King Jack off? So step dealer, and this doesn't shock me. Calls, which frankly I would do. Uh, I hate it when it's, the, the this program for some reason just scrolls up. But I don't. I think it's a good call. Whatever he has, aces, ace, king, pair of sevens. If he somehow lost his mind and three bet pocket sevens, I think the call makes sense. He's probably got almost the right price to set mine here because he's calling 70 bucks he doesn't really have the right price to set mine but he's got so many hands if he should just call with and there's no reason to get it in i guess if he had a hand like jacks or queens maybe you could argue he should just get it in right now but i don't know i think it protects i have, I have no idea i i i'm surprised we're even getting to a flop here well we're gonna see a flop and now look at look at how the pot is 273 and they still have a stack to pot ratio of about two so it's yeah they're not i mean you, you still could fold at this point now uh this guy step dealer acts first i think he's checking everything and he does check yeah this is such an awesome flop for what um we raised he threat three bet we four bet so if our four bet range is like aces kings maybe queens ace king maybe a random ace five suited or something this is actually a great flop i i think you could justify I don't know if we should be shoving here because it's so big, but um, shoving. I, yeah. Why are we shoving double pot with King Jack off? What is going on in this? I do we not just four, oh, so, all right. We just four bet and he just called. Uh, yeah, we yeah, can. But so like, you could say I'm check folding. By the way, I believe we have the Jack of Hearts, which isn't useful here. There's no back row heart draw. Um, there's no. I mean, the, the suits. And then we have, I think, King of Spades or something. So. Our hand is as bad as it could be for us to be in this position. But you got here. You got 443 behind on a pot of 273. Step dealer didn't shove. 
which if he's, I don't know if he really flats everything, but he's still got a lot of ace king. He's probably got tens, jacks, maybe nines. He's got a lot of hands that are going to be very unhappy calling a shove here. So if you're, once you get to this spot, I truly don't know what to do here. I can see just um, checking back and giving up. I could see making a small bet in the hopes that you could fold out ace king or ace queen. Right? What's ace king going to do if you bet here? Depends on the size. Like I think, yeah. I think if he bets like eighty bucks, I think every hand that step dealer has pretty much probably calls. So yeah, you so probably don't. But but at the same time, I only bet bigger with bluffs probably. So yeah, I mean, you could you could make a I think a TTO play with range here is something like half pot at most. And and the nice thing about that, I think we should go a little smaller. If we bet something like. Ninety dollars, leaving ourselves three fifty. Well, it's a little too small. I would make it even smaller, like seventy five dollars. Let him call, then jam turn where you're jamming for about pot. Yeah, that. I mean, sure. We, I guess, we all have one of these in the tank. But like, why? No, why are we I, putting in six hundred dollars in it? Neither of us would have ever gotten to this spot ever. I would just buy-ins. easily fold the king jack off pre flop yeah. because his range, unless it's insanely wide, we're just behind. And I wouldn't four bet it if if you were that wide. There's no real reason to four bet it either. But here we are, and I, it's a fair question though. Like if we are dropped down in this spot and we have no choice in the matter, maybe a small bet is good, and then a sh and then a turn shove is good because I mean it does make the stack it 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 makes a shove pretty reasonable, uh, uh, like size pot size wise, um, and stack size wise. I mean. Um, I don't even hate just getting it in now. It, it puts the other guy in a pretty awful position. I just am um, probably, I can't think of a hand that I'm not bluffing with. Like, like, I don't think I shove aces on this flop. What do you do with aces here? Uh, I probably, I probably bet, I, I probably bet $90. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I even think a little smaller for the same reason. Which is, but I hate a shot with aces. I wouldn't shove with it, and I don't. I don't really that's like. A that's what I'm saying. So you're like, I don't mind shoving, and I'm like, well, I I'm not like shoving 100 percent of my bluffs. We could be balanced if we wanted to be. What you're saying is you don't want to be. If you have aces or kings, you don't really want to shove. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't want to be. I'm just saying how I like. I yeah. just don't think I have an aces shove in the tank, but that's probably because I'm not good enough. You know, it's I like. I mean. I don't I, think it's no, but I really don't. Like I don't think I am balanced in spots like this. I can't think of a time where mm -hmm. like I mean right. you don't do more reasonably though, Jim, more reasonably. We could be yeah. here with aces, we could be here with ace kings suited, we could be here with queens, kings. You might occasionally like I think ace five suited is not a an unreasonable hand to yeah. four bet pre. So if we're here with ace five suited, sure if they happen to be diamonds, we're pretty happy because we probably have fifty percent equity against almost everything. But um, if it's not diamonds, hearts has at least a prayer of a backdoor heart draw. But um, if we have like ace five of clubs or any almost any ace king, unless it has two diamonds in it, we're we're we're, we're not in a good spot. But we're against a guy who called the four bet. So I, and I'm, I'm saying because I'm really not sure in in balance in GTO whether we would just give up with all of those hands. Um, or check back because you might hit your ace if you have ace five, yeah. ace king. You have at least some outs. Or make that small bet with range. And I, I think more likely we should make the small bet with our entire range. The more I think about it. Because it's such a favorable flop. He doesn't have any eights. What four bet is he calling with an eight in it? He rarely has pocket sixes. And everything else is under a ton of pressure. The, yeah. the, the unpaired hands, he, uh, he just can't call much with a with ace queen for one thing you might be dominated by ace king you know why are you going to call with ace queen and it sets up a really nice turn shove as well he but no he checks back all right so checking back to abandon okay i mean we, we maybe we're just giving up because our hand is is just it, it, we caught no part of this uh here comes the three of hearts which is a pretty nice brick actually step dealer leads for 120 which i think was that's about half pot would be 136 so it's less than half pot nice i like the sizing by the way 
seems pretty reasonable. Um, I think this is a fine time to give up because I cannot imagine he's going to fall to a show. Or And why would we call? We have no equity. But uh, yeah. Charlie does not agree with us. He goes all in. And I think, I don't know how long it took, but he gets snapped off by pocket tens. And um, they actually ran it twice. Somehow their online poker program enables them to run it twice. Mm. And he didn't hit either time for whatever that matters. But that's a hand I just thought it was interesting. Um, I, I don't think I don't think that was GTO. <laughs> but um, yeah, they, they, they're obviously extremely aggro in the uh, Yale Online Poker Street. I got one more here. Let's see if it loads here. Okay, cool. I, I mean, I don't. I I see myself probably shoving that. Like, uh, I do think you get tens to fold every now and then. Like, oh, if, yeah. if, it's, if it's a weak player, like I don't hate the shove. I do probably give up, and I and I don't, and I certainly don't get to the turn. Well, but, the thing uh, is, I, if you're going to try to take him off tens or jacks, then queens shouldn't be too happy either against. Look, and when we play live poker, four bets are usually quite strong. So queens might get sticky, but tens should be really unhappy. The problem to me is that, and no offense to Charlie, who you said played this hand, like yeah. the sizing pre-flop makes me think that it might be someone less experienced because I don't, but that also might just be me being patronizing. But to me, in in like, I don't, really see that sizing pre-flop as kind of optimal for really any hands. I, so. I, I can get behind his pre-flop min raise four bet because it's such a big percentage of his stack. And as we just saw, when the guy calls, he has no problems getting it in. He, he got it in on one street. They check back the flop and he still got stacks in. I mean, yeah. it'd be awkward, as you said. He'd be shoving 2x pot, but he's never going to have trouble getting stacks in. So I actually think in theory... His size, his format sizing might be okay. It's definitely supposed to be smaller. If they were much deeper, then yeah, you probably 3x it at least. The downside mm -hmm. of his preflop sizing is you, you create, I mean, you could argue that now he has odds to call with sixes, but he doesn't really. He's not getting even close to the right. Yeah, to yeah you're right. Yeah. I, I, the thing I don't like about it, and I probably wouldn't do it either, is the random ace will, will call you off. And a lot of the hands that you want to format, don't really want to give aces a free shot because they're just going to fold the flop if they don't get an ace and they won't fold if they do. And you're basically mm -hmm. giving away a fair amount of, of um, equity realization if you do that. Anyway, the, but nonetheless, I actually think the um, when Charlie checked back the flop in that last hand, the other player may have just said, oh, he's never checking back an overpair. I'm going for it now with my tens. Whereas if you make your small bet, $70, $80, $85, whatever, and the guy calls with his 10s. There's no reason for him to raise. Now the turn shove looks just awful. For one thing, yeah. it's a much bigger bet. I mean, it's full pot. So does 10s call? I mean, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't find it an easy call against most players. Hmm. The reason 10s probably does call is he always puts the other guy in ace-king, which he shouldn't, but they always do. Like, yeah. ace-king, I call. So, all right, we got one more. Let me get back to Spike. This is the same game. So there's your $2 and your $4 straddle. Those aren't really raises. They're already there. Um, this guy, say, folds. Trey Skid is in the small blind and raises. Is this before or this is after he's already been stacked for 600 to 5? I don't really know. I don't know which hand came first, but you can see it's $664.50. So he probably reloaded. I don't know. Okay. Or maybe this came earlier. Either way. So this guy, Trey Skid, who's super deep, raises to 14.75. I like that sizing a little better, by the way. That's um, three and a half X, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, personally, I'd probably go bigger. I'd probably make it 16 yeah. or, or, or or even 20, maybe. Like I, 18, maybe. 16, 18, I think, is my open. Probably. I'm with you there. The, these online guys, I have no idea how these guys play, but the online preflop raise sizes tend to be a little smaller for what it's worth. Okay. Whether that's right or not, I mean, I've never played with three mandatory straddles, so I don't really know yeah. what would be optimal pre-flop, yeah. but I'm guessing bigger is probably a little bit better. The other thing about this guy, Trey Skid, is he's got Kawisa behind. They're, they're so deep, and um, I think yeah. I think that probably speaks to raising a bit more pre-flop, maybe with a tighter range. I don't know. I would need Andrew Brokus to 
tell me whether that's right. But anyway, here's Charlie in the natural big blind who three bets again, this time to $43.50. In position on this guy, and that's basically 3Xing, which seems okay. I think that seems okay. Um, and he's, it's not quite 10% of his stack, so that's good. He's not over committing free. Fold, fold, fold. And this guy, I believe, calls. All right, so we've got, we're going to get $94 in the pot with 621 behind, which is pretty reasonable SPR. All right. Oh, by the way, do you want to know Charlie's hand? Yeah. All right. He's got pocket kings. Um, okay. I don't think he has a diamond. I don't recall. We'll see at the end. It would make maybe a slight difference if he did. But so he's got kings and... How, much, how big did you make it before? 48. Uh, it was about 43 something, but because of the straddles, the pot's 94. Um, and he three yeah. so three yeah. kid raised to 14 something, and Charlie yeah. was 44. And here, here we are. This I might go a tiny bit, bit bigger with kings, especially with how deep everyone is. But I mean, it's not. Well, yeah, I mean, the, oh, I see, because you got guys behind you too. But he's 600 effective, so it's okay. I mean, I I, I could go either way. I, 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 yeah. But now the problem here is that. Well, at least we're in position two, so that's also enables you to three bet not quite so huge. But now you've got kings and a jack eight seven flop, which is pretty nasty because I think I think Trey Skid has a nut advantage. I doubt that Charlie is three betting ten. Nine. You're gonna say you check this back hundred percent of the time. No, that's not great. necessarily. I mean, it's a reasonable prediction. But this is this is one like let's forget what Trey Skid does. The first thing is I. I think our Charlie's three betting range should have all the over pairs in it. Um, yeah, he has top set here too. I don't know if he's three betting eights and sevens. I don't think he should. Not because, again, we're basically in early position given all those straddles. Yeah. So he probably doesn't have eights or sevens. He does have pocket jacks. And then um, the 10 nine. Does he have had nine, 10 of diamonds? He might. I, I don't love three betting that. I think it plays great in position as a call. So yeah. no, you could occasionally, but I can't imagine you're purely three betting 10 nine, any 10 nine. Yeah. The other problem is that this guy, Trace Kid, who Ray's called, surely has all of those suited connectors. He has 8 7, he has 9 8, 10 9, Jack 10. He has all of them. He, yeah. if, he, if he has any offsuit 10 9, I hope he doesn't, but if he does, then he's very wide, so it probably doesn't matter that much. He should not be calling three bets with 10 9 offsuit, but. You don't know. These guys are so deep that he, he might do it. Anyway, I am truly torn here. The only problem with our kings is we're deep here. We have six times the pot. So if we bet and get check raised. Yeah, you, so you bar. It's hard for us to hang on. I mean. Yeah, I agree. With multiple streets of aggression. Also, like, what, what do we hope he has? Diamond draws have a lot of equity against us. Even a hand like 10-9 or 9-7 if he has it. Has it? A lot of equity. It has four. It has nine outs. Now we're ahead, but we. And when we're behind, we are screwed. If he's just got a set, we're almost dead. We don't even really have backdoor. We don't yeah. even have a backdoor draw at all. The diamond. If we have the king of diamonds, then we have a little bit of a backdoor draw. So yeah, I mean, maybe maybe we should check back. So what's your play? Um. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You you bath when. Uh, when you get raised here, so I don't know. You either bet small and call a raise, like you bet small to maybe induce a raise. No, that doesn't. I'm thinking out loud, but I mean, could. But we're not happy when we're raised, even if we induced it. The problem being that we can't re-raise. We can't bet three bet. I mean, if we do, we're just getting stacked whenever we're beat. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can check that, but like, you're also giving a lot of free cards to like to letting people catch up a hell of a lot of a hell of a lot. Honestly, the only turns we're happy to see are offsuit twos and threes. Yeah, bricks. I mean, a king would be nice, but yeah. but yeah. everything else is pretty awful. Um, queen doesn't bring in too much pocket queens but we're not expecting to see that and ace beats us often and anything in the middle 
I don't I mean, want to see a jack or a nine or a ten. I mean, eight or seven might not be too too bad. I didn't think a queen is great. It's not great because you could have queen jack, but um, the the point is like we there's no good turns for our hand. Now, does that imply we should get our value now and check back turns? Yeah, I mean, if you if you knew for certain he would only call your bet here, then I would love it. Because we can bet, get called by worse, check mm. back a turn, and now we face some river aggression sometimes. But it's okay. I mean, we'll, we that would be fine. The, the possibility of getting check raised, I think, hurts us quite a bit when we're this deep. Anyway, let's see what happens. So Trace get checks. Okay, I think Charlie bets 46. So he decided, let's see what the bet, it was about $94. 46 is half pot, not quite, basically half pot. Um, I don't have a lot to say about the sizing since I wasn't too happy with the bet in the first place, but I would say this, that if Trace Kid never bluff raises, then nice. You could even go bigger. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Trace Kid just calls. That's great. Like This is the yeah. best we could have hoped for. Um, you definitely still think you're good at this point. Oh, yeah. He's raising anything, like... All right, let's go through this. Um, I've got to go help with Spike. Yeah, we're, we'll be fast. The turn is awful because Trace Kid has plenty of jacks. I think it goes check, check. All right, fine. We I check, check, I we check just back can't here. Out here. And the, the river is 10 of diamonds. Again, uh, one of the worst cards. Any nine is a straight, two diamonds yeah. is a flush. Any jack beats us. Pocket tens now beats us. I mean, we just beat almost nothing here. He now bets 67, which is quite small. 67 is like one-third pot. Yeah. And it's a really good sizing if you think about it. Are you folding or calling with Pocket King? Um, I'm, I'm side calling every time and losing 100% of the time, I think. I'm like, whatever, good bet. Um, but yeah, I, I'm probably just side calling. We're getting four to one. I don't remember if he has the King of Diamonds. I would say this. If I have the King of Diamonds, I'm not folding. Yeah. If I don't have the King of Diamonds, it's a tough – we're getting four to one. And yeah. we're so high and in our – like, And after we've checked back, he has to bet that river, I think. Like, we're – I think he's we're betting more. most things. We, we're betting pretty much everything that the 10 helps on the turn. Uh, if, you know, we're, that's how I see it. I mean, if we had somehow 9-8, you would bet the turn when the jack comes? I guess you could. Yeah. Maybe. No, right? no, probably not. I mean, the jack, I, that's that's a long debate. Okay, not 9-8, not 9-8. Uh, but uh, you're, probably, you're probably betting diamonds on the oh, – maybe you're not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're just you're looking for that free card if it's if you have diamonds. If we just go by our pre-flop – Three bet range, whatever the heck that is. We have very few flushes. Ace five of diamonds, ace king of diamonds, ace queen of diamonds, and we might have bet some of them on the turn. And I don't know. Hmm. We we just have a lot of, um, and then we have these over pairs. I just think we have to fold all those ace kings and ace queens. They're they're worthless. We're not playing a bet with them. But that's already a ton of hands. That's sixteen combos of ace king, maybe up to sixteen combos of ace queen. We can't go folding kings. It's too high up in our distribution. Yeah. That, that said, should be right. that said mm -hmm. this guy this guy probably does always have it. But don't show me a raise. Huh. He folds, which is he in, folds. Okay. inconsistent with, oh, he didn't have a diamond. So, yeah, maybe that's reasonable. Maybe we fold. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. I, this program is good. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think our hands played fine, to be honest, pretty much. Nice job, Charlie. And that's the yeah. last word. Jim? Thank you for joining me on this. Uh